Ben and I met in 2011 and um, we kind of just hit things off every weekend we spent together. I was 36 years old and uh, was uh, you know, a bachelor, was working a lot of hours uh, traveling around the world. So we dated uh, for about a year and a half. We um, were engaged in December of 2012. She said yes and that started, a, that started a chain of events. Did a short engagement of six months and got married in June of 2013. And we were just at that point where we were like, okay, let's have a kid, you know, maybe let's, let's just have one and then we'll see how it goes and we'll, we'll go for a second. And after about a year of nothing happening, we found out that there was less than 2% chance that we would probably be able to conceive. And started the, uh, the uh, IVF infertil infertility journey. And we transferred two embryos. Basically they said, okay, there's a 70% chance that you'll have one baby, 40% chance of twins, and less than 2% chance that one would split into identicals. We had our ultrasound to determine uh, if uh, you know, we had a baby. So we, we go to uh, the doctor, the doctor starts the ultrasound, and very quickly he kind of, he goes, hmm. He's looking and he's not really saying anything, and Jen, Jen starts crying. The doctor looks up and says, it's not that kind of, hmm. She said, what do you mean? He said, there's three. <laughs> I about passed out. You've got to be kidding me, like, this is impossible. We both kind of took a deep breath. He said, congratulations, now let's talk about what it means. Um, he said, you are considered high risk. Uh, you're gonna have to be monitored uh, very carefully and very regularly. You're probably going to uh, not carry these babies full term. He told us that the first ultrasound at seven weeks, do not go out and buy anything in threes, because more than likely one of them is not gonna last this pregnancy. I was being monitored very close. I had doctor's appointments every other week. And we got to um, the 28 week mark. And on that Monday, I went in and met with my MFM and she was like, you're perfect. You made it to 28 weeks, that's great. You're gonna go to 36, I know it. You're gonna go to 36 weeks. That afternoon, I was just like, you know, my back's really killing me, it's hurting. When you go through that pregnancy, especially with multiples, it's not a normal pregnancy, it never is. So I was, I had, kind of this vision in my head that if I called the doctor, oh, well, it's probably just because you have three babies in you. So we ended up going in around 7 a.m. the next morning and they said, you're in active labor. We're going to do everything we can to slow this down, but you're not leaving here until you have these babies. Any amount of time, hours that I could keep them in was better than them coming out, um, you know, and that's what I thought in my head. So when they said, six o'clock we're going you know and we're going to schedule the c-section and get these babies out it was just a defeated feeling i felt like what did i do wrong you know nothing was wrong with the pregnancy the whole time and here's this unknown labor and i'm bringing three 28 week babies that i don't know how they're going to survive 20 plus people in the operating room um they cut into me to get the babies out and within three minutes had all three babies out. Um, one came out crying, the other two didn't. You know, baby A is out, and they said, it's a boy. What do you want to name him? She said, that's Eli. A minute later, said, all right, baby B, little girl. And I said, that's Lizzie. Then baby C came out, and that was Wade. So as soon as they took the babies out, went straight to the respiratory team. Once they got them stabilized, they went straight to the NICU. They transported them and to get them hooked up because um, breathing was like number one priority. I, I, don't, I don't think that I can say I was ever truly happy during that day. You know, most people, it's the happiest day of their life when their babies are born. Um, that wasn't the case for us. You know, we were happy, but at the same time it was, this is one of the saddest things, to see, see your babies that small. This whole NICU journey was a new experience. You know, there's things hooked up to them, there's buzzers going off. They were born Thursday night, and I got to go home Monday night. So they were, they, since I had a C-section, um, they were able to justify keeping me in the hospital for that long. On Monday night, though, we had to leave, and it was one of the hardest things. Um, again, I think you kind of take for granted that, oh, you know, you see other people on the hall that have just had babies the same time you did. They're in the room, they're feeding their babies, uh, they're holding them, they're dressing them. That was 
down the road for us. Um, you know, we, we didn't get that first experience like most people do. Based on our experiences, we didn't, we heard March of Dimes and you didn't really think about it. Um, and now that we've experienced it, it, it's something I think about every day. 15 million babies born premature every year in the United States and one million of those died. That's, n that's not a good statistic. Uh, it certainly opens your eyes to, to you know, how, how fortunate that, that we are to have the research that has been done to be able to, to get the babies to where they, they do have a fighting chance. Now, after seeing the care that, that we received on the NICU and knowing that these developments have all been, a lot of these things have been funded by the March of Dimes and trying to figure out how to, one, take care of them and two, prevent, you know, premature babies, uh, it, it really has become something that's more important. One of these days, they're going to understand um, what they've been through, the journey that they had to, to be brought into this world. You know, my hope is that they that they truly understand that uh, they've been been blessed with the gift of life, and uh, I hope they take full advantage of it.